Welcome to Area and Perimeter of a Parallelogram. You will need a pencil and your math notebook for this video. Please pause this video and open to the first clean page in your math notebook. Once you've opened that, I would like you to write area and perimeter of a parallelogram at the top of your page, just like this video has. Once you've done that, you may push play. In our last lesson, we talked about finding the area and perimeter of a rectangle. We will review that now. In your notebook, I would like you to pause this video and I'd like you to copy down the rectangle below. In my rectangle, I have the length as 3 inches and the width as 5 inches. Once you have recorded that into your notebook, then you may press play. Now that you have this rectangle in your notebook, I'd like to review with you how to find the area and the perimeter. Remember, when we're finding the area, we are looking for all of the stuff inside of my box. In our last lesson, we discussed a formula um, having to do with area. Area equals our length times our width. That formula will help us as we try to find this area. The length of my rectangle is 3. The width is 5. Knowing that, my length times my width, 3 times 5 equals 15. When I'm finding my area, I always have to remember that when I label it, my area is 15 inches squared or you can also put square inches. That means I'm not just talking about a line, I'm instead talking about a full square. So 15 one inch squares could fit inside of my rectangle. For perimeter, remember, peri means around and meter means measure. We are measuring around our rectangle. Because I know that rectangles have opposite congruent sides, because 5 inches is on that side, the opposite side is also 5 inches. Same with 3. Because 3 inches is below, I can assume that the top is also 3 inches. Now that I've filled in all my numbers, I need to add those numbers up. 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 3. 5 and 5 is 10, 3 and 3 is 6, my perimeter is 16, 16 inches. I don't need to square the answer for my perimeter because I'm simply talking about the outside line instead of the inside filling. That's a review of what we learned in our previous lessons. Today, we're going to talk about finding the area of a little bit of a more difficult shape, a parallelogram. Finding the area and perimeter of a parallelogram is a little bit different than finding the area and perimeter of a rectangle or square. First, I want to remind you, what is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a shape that's opposite sides are both parallel and congruent, which means they're the same size and the same shape. Remember that as we talk about parallelograms. Below, you've, you can see the parallelogram that I have drawn. I would like you to pause this video and copy down each part of the parallelogram. Today we're going to talk about the length, the width, and we will also talk about the height. Make sure you copy those all down into your notebook just as you see on the screen in front of you. Once you're done, you may press play. Finding the perimeter on a parallelogram is just like you find the perimeter on a rectangle or square. You still need to measure all of the outside lines and add them together. So on a parallelogram, if my length is 5, the opposite side is also 5 centimeters. If my width is 3 centimeters, my other width is also 3 centimeters. Both of my sides are parallel and congruent. Now all I need to do is add up my sides to find my perimeter. 5 plus 5 plus 3 
plus 3. 5 and 5 is 10. 3 and 3 is 6. 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 centimeters. Finding the area of a parallelogram is a bit more difficult. Notice that our parallelogram is slanted, so we have to take account for that when we find the area. Because of that, I do not want to use my width, or sometimes called the slant height, because it's slanted. Instead, to find the area of a parallelogram, I need to use something called my height, or my true height. The height of a parallelogram is from its base all the way up to its top. And you can notice here, I've labeled that as four centimeters. Four centimeters is your height. When we're looking at the formula for a parallelogram, in order to find the area, you need to take the base, or the length, times the height, not times the width like you would in a rectangle. So knowing that, I would take 5 times 4 equals 20. It is very easy to get confused when you're talking about parallelograms and accidentally multiply 5 times 3, the slant height. You don't want to do that. That will get you the wrong answer. You need to use the base 5 times the height, which would be 4, 20. Even though our formula is a bit different, the way we label is still the same. Centimeters squared or square centimeters. Hopefully you followed along as I worked. If you did, you're ready to move on to the next example. If you did not, you need to, re to rewind and listen to it again, making sure you're making the same marks that I'm making in your notebook. Once you've done this, you can move on to the second example. Below you will see the second example that we are going to talk about today. Please copy down the parallelogram. Please include the base or the length the width, also known as the slant height, and my height into your drawing. Once you have done that, you may press play. Now that you have copied down the parallelogram, let's talk about finding the perimeter. Just like we're used to, finding the perimeter is just the same. If 10 is on the base, 10 is also the length of our top. If 9 is our slant height, 9 is also the length on the opposite side. We follow around the edge when we look at perimeter and we add them all up. 10 plus 10 plus 9 plus 9. 9 and 9 is 18. 10 and 10 is 20. 20 plus 18 is 38. My perimeter is 30. 8 inches. Finding the area of a parallelogram is different. You'll notice that I've written the formula up at the top of the slide. Area equals base times height. Our base, also known as the length, is 10 inches. Our height is the true height of our parallelogram, not the slant height. Finding the area of a parallelogram, we need to multiply the base 10 times the true height, 6. 10 times 6, if you get rid of that 0, 1 times 6 is 6, add that 0 back in. 10 times 6 is 60. Don't forget, when you're labeling area, you need to make sure that you're accounting for all of the space inside our parallelogram. Because of that, we are going to label it inches squared. Now that we've looked at two examples of a parallelogram, I would like you to try the parallelogram below by yourself. See if you can figure out what the area and the perimeter of this parallelogram is. Once you've copied this into your notebook and given it a try, you can press play and see how you did. Now that you've given it a try, let's see how you did. Finding the perimeter, you should have looked at the outside edge of our parallelogram and filled in the missing labels. If 4 is on the bottom, 4 is on the top. 
if five's on this side, five's on that side. Once you've filled in those missing pairs, all you need to do is add them up. Five plus five plus four plus four. Five and five is 10, four and four is eight, 10 plus eight is 18. The perimeter is 18 millimeters. Finding the area, I gave you a clue at the top. The area is the base times the height. Hopefully you didn't get confused and use the slant height. What you should have done is multiplied four times six. Four times six is 24. Your answer is 24 millimeters squared or square millimeters. How did you do? If you got it right, nice job. If you didn't, I'd like you to go back to either question one or two and review. What part did you miss? Did you get confused on the base and the height? Make sure you have this down before you come to class tomorrow so that we can go over some more examples together. Thanks for listening. Have a great evening.